Oh, and it looks like C right there. This is the first example of the year where we have an egg way up high. You can see it right there. That is definitely bad when you see that with the Kluber. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. Ooh, doggy, take a look at that beautiful girl right there. She is a creamsicle corn snake, and that is a gorgeous clutch of eggs. I'm gonna be collecting some snake eggs here in a bit. I think we've got some python eggs. Kluber day is gonna be amazing, but first, I've gotta actually feed Daisy, my giant snake, as well as Butterscotch. So I'm gonna head over to the Reptarium, feed those guys really quick, then I'll come back and collect some eggs. So the first girl I'm gonna feed is Daisy, and see if she's gonna eat, because she definitely looks like she is ready. Come on, girl, you want some food? Come on, girl, come on, girl. Here you go, girl, here you go. There you go. All right, there it is. Good girl. Way to go, little girl. I tell you, she's, uh, she's definitely turned on to food. Over the winter, she would eat maybe once every two, two and a half weeks. Now she's been eating every single week. She is definitely all over it, which is good because we can beef her up during the summertime. She is absolutely adorable. Not just feeding big snakes today. Eric, you've got to feed colubrids today as oh, well. Oh yeah, yeah, colubrid room feeding day. It's it's a blast, it's a blast. It's kind of weird though. I don't know if I've mentioned this before with everything, you know, going into breeding mode or uh, laying eggs or going off of food. Every week I got to go through and recount and see who's eating, see who's not eating. So it's kind of, that. that's kind of interesting, but you know, just got to get everything fed today and get them checked tomorrow. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, literally, you know, in these red tags, for instance, these females aren't eating, because when snakes get gravid, they don't eat. And even before they have the red tags, they'll swell up and they kind of go off of food. So if we thought out the same amount of food, we'd be throwing away about yeah. 20 or 25%. So Eric has to adjust. And then of course, as a female lays, he's got to add that back to the rotation. So it's always a little bit of a process, but that's what makes a successful breeding season. So uh, have fun. Uh, I'll check back with you in a little bit. Got it. Next up is trying to feed butterscotch. You can see I'm up on a ladder. I've got a rabbit. Uh, she is right at the front of the cage. Uh, this should be pretty interesting. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully she can't strike this far because I might be in trouble. Let's go ahead and see what she's going. Come on, girl. Oh, this is going to be so sketchy. Somehow I have to literally open this cage, get the rabbit, and get it in front of her face before she gets me. I don't know how this is going to work. Whoa! Oh. Yeah, that happened quick, uh, but she did good. So our heart rate always goes up a little bit, but uh, I think she got it pretty good. I'm just gonna get her back in her cage uh, and let her eat this rabbit. Butterscotch is about halfway done with the rabbit. You know, each big snake feeds a little bit differently. Lucy's really fast with her food. Daisy takes quite a bit of time. Daisy typically takes about 20 minutes to eat a rabbit. Butterscotch is also pretty quick, so usually within about 10 or 15 minutes, she'll crush the first rabbit. Oftentimes, I'll give her a second one, so I'll go ahead and let her finish. We'll check back on her and see when she finishes up. That's a wrap. Last little snake done. I'm gonna close this tub up. I'll be back tomorrow and we gotta go through, check the charge, check for mice. Hopefully I don't miss one. That could be pretty stinky in a couple days, but that, that's about it, guys. That does it. I'm pretty excited. Danny, one of our new employees, went to a reptile show a couple days ago and brought us these crested geckos that go in our new display. The only downside is, is that they hide so well you can barely see them. I mean, this is a little female right here. This is another female here. And then the male is all the way back over here. You can see he's just coming out. There he is. Whoop, 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 whoop. And here he is. He's absolutely gorgeous. I'm just going to go ahead and gently set him down there. He seems to like it right back. Back there definitely a lot of really great places for these guys to hide so uh, this trail is gonna look really good the only challenging thing is finding them that's for sure but I want people to be able to enjoy this naturalistic habitat but also I want them to be able to see them so uh, excited to finally have some crested geckos at the reptarium
And that's a wrap for feeding the big snakes. All I was gonna feed is Daisy and Butterscotch today because obviously Lucy isn't eating and then the rest of the big snakes really eat rats. So regardless, we'll feed those guys tomorrow. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed uh, feeding the big snakes. And as I always say, I don't get any pleasure out of feeding rabbits or whatever, or any animal for that matter, but this is just part of the gig and we do only feed frozen thawed. Because listen, I love rabbits too. I used to have a pet rabbit. They're absolutely amazing animals. Looks like we have a delivery guy here at the door. What does he got? Hello. Hello. Special delivery. <laughs> I got some. What is that? It <laughs> says floor mat. Floor mat. Do you have any idea what that is? Did you order some, Lauren? I did not oh. order a floor mat, no. Let's see what we got. What is this? Okay, it is a, a floor mat. It's a floor mat. What kind? Just a normal floor oh, mat? Oh, it's or? a big, pretty green one. You, you want to help? Gosh, get out of here. There is no way. Did you order that, Lauren? Woo! I did not order oh, this. Oh, we were just Look talking that. about this. Yeah. Reptarium oh, my floor mat, baby. <laughs> That is sick, it's huge too. It is big. <laughs> oh my god, that Ooh. is awesome. Phoebe likes it. <laughs> Phoebe <laughs> loves it. Look how cool oh, that is. Do you have any idea who this is from? I don't know. No. Let's see, on the package. Uh, Rick Cockerham. And where is he from? He is the from... UPS <laughs> the UPS store. Yep, the UPS store. <laughs> oh my gosh, Rick, I is love this dude. Is there any note? Oh, it looks like there might be. There it is. Okay, so there is a note. What does it say? It says, Brian and Lori, as an avid reptile keeper since my early childhood, I've really enjoyed watching the vlogs, seeing the incredible animals, all you do. They he went to applaud and support what we're doing. This is so nice. In your vlogs, I have noticed you did not have a custom logo mat for the Reptarium. My company provides product with purpose to many industries and thought that he would send a nice front door greeter. Oh my God. This is awesome. This is floormat.com. Is yeah. All right, so floormat.com. Rick, this is awesome. Thank you yeah. so much. I mean, literally, we were just talking about this a few days ago and I didn't even know where we would buy one. Oh my God. Oh, no. I love it. Let's, let's put it next door, all right? Let's yes, do it. This is sweet. Oh, look, look at that. That, that is Woo. nasty. Woohoo! I tell you what. I love it. I'm so excited about this. That's this is cool. awesome. Again, Rick, thank you so much. Floormat.com. If you guys uh, need anything, by the way, have we didn't, it wasn't a brand deal. We didn't get paid. I didn't even know this was coming, so. Uh, there we go. Awesome. Head downstairs and see if we have any python eggs with Kelsey. I think she said that we had at least one clutch, so we'll go ahead and see what she's got going on over here. Kelsey, where are you at? Where'd she go? Oh, she's over here. Okay. So, our first clutch, we've got a pastel that was bred to a Woma Lesser Pinstripe. Okay, good. Looks like she's got a nice clutch. What do we got here, girl? Let's see, honey. Oh, yeah, nice. Oh, got one little slugger over there in the end. Big eggs, not a whole lot of eggs, but uh, they're definitely big. There's no doubt about that. She's a pretty girl, too. She's a very nice pastel. All right, let's get this little slugger out over here. Guys, I cannot believe that that's a small clutch right there. We only have four good eggs right there and one slug. So five eggs. Uh, again, a little bit of a small clutch, but it's still okay because there's a lot of combinations. Again, Woma, Lesser, Pinstripe. There's a bunch of codominants there. Of course, the pastel is codominant. So it could be some really beautiful babies. So uh, not bad. Is this the only clutch or we have more? We have more. All right, let's do it. Next up is a normal bread to a calico. So it's just calico. So we're just looking at calicos here, obviously. So calico is a co-dominant clutch. Again, another small little clutch. It's so weird. What the heck is going on? That's a big girl to only have four little eggs. That's crazy. No slugs or anything. That is unusual because she's got to be, when she's full on, she's got to be 17, 1800 grams. I would expect six or eight eggs from a girl like that because they're not even that big of eggs, but uh, four eggs, what can you do? And again, that calico is actually a co-dominant mutation so theoretically half these babies should be calico what a trip that's crazy look at how big she is and it doesn't even really look like she laid eggs but that's still good hey i tell you what i'll take four eggs any day over anything else so uh that wraps up it down here yep and you said we have one more girl that's laying that'll be good for tomorrow yes. all right good and i'm sure we'll have some other eggs too so good job as always kelsey i'll let you set those up and we'll get them in the incubator back to collecting that kluber clutch that i started out with we have a few clutches today so let's go ahead and see what they look like you know this first girl which is a creamsicle head for scale it says spread to the same thing just a creamsicle head for scale has had some good eggs they are absolutely huge eggs too for a corn snake these are really really large eggs and again because that creamsicle has 
emery rat influence it. That's why they have bigger eggs. Emery rats actually have much larger eggs and a smaller amount. Corn snakes have smaller eggs and a lot more. So this is kind of a mix of both. And man, I tell you what, these are big eggs and a really big clutch right there. Again, we'll just check mama out real quick, make sure she's in good shape. She sure looks like it. She sure is full of energy right now, isn't she? I'll take this shed out, get some water in here, and let's go ahead and count the eggs. We've got two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven beautiful eggs, and one little tiny slugger right there. So not bad way to start the day. Let's collect the next few clutches. This is pretty exciting. The next clutch is actually what they call a Halloween Pueblin milk snake, which is just a really beautiful kind of orangey snake that has kind of wacky patterns. Absolutely incredible milk snake right there. And she looks really good. Definitely can tell she laid a clutch of eggs. It doesn't look like she's too beat up. So I'm going to pull that shed out. You know the routine. Go and get some water in there and all that stuff. Let's see what kind of eggs she has. Oh my gosh. That is a beautiful, huge clutch for a Pueblin. Oh my God. I'm so excited because that Halloween gene is so cool in Pueblin milk snakes. When you see these babies hatch, you are going to be like, oh my gosh, those things are incredible. Can't wait. And again, that's only about 60 days away. So we're going to be seeing some really beautiful babies pretty soon. What a gorgeous clutch of eggs. That's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 eggs. Oh my gosh. Remember I told you guys last time that it's rare to get more than about eight eggs from a Pueblin clutch. So 12 eggs, I'll take that. That's for sure. That's amazing. Last clutch of Klubert's for the day. And it's actually our first clutch of scaleless rat snakes. We had that double head for leucistic scaleless, but this is the first scaleless female to lay an egg. And you can see this is one of those crazy scaleless sheds right here. This one must have a little bit of scales on it because that shed has quite a bit of scales. Oh yeah, you can definitely see she's about 50% scale. So it's not one of those really uber pretty ones. Oh, and it looks like C right there. This is the first example of the year where we have an egg way up high. You can see it right there. That is definitely bad when you see that with the colubrid. Again, egg binding happens. It's the way it goes. I'm just going to go ahead, put her in and just see if I can feel if that'll move at all. I don't know. I think she's going to end up being able to push that out to be totally honest with you. So the protocol with this is typically leave them for a couple days. Let's see what happens before we get concerned about it. But again, unlike Lucy and a lot of these other snakes, I'm able to aspirate those eggs out because they're right by the vent. This one is way up top. So I don't really know what's going on. Hopefully she just kind of ran out of energy and she'll pass those eggs over the next couple days. We'll have to wait to see. And again, doesn't look like she passed too many eggs at all. Looks like we've got two good fertile ones here. Another two here, making it four. And is there any more eggs in here? Wow, no kidding. That is a really small clutch. Only looks like she had one, maybe two eggs stuck in her. So to have six eggs for a rat snake is pretty unusual. But hey, we got four good eggs. We're going to go ahead and get them in the inky box. And that wraps up colubrid eggs for the day. And I hate to have that little slug egg that that ball python go to waste. So we've been feeding them off to like monitors and stuff like that. I haven't tried with Tazzy yet, but Tazzy has been doing really good on the ball training with the target. So let's just see if he'd like an egg like this. I have a feeling he really will. Here you go, Tazzy. Okay, we're feeding. Feeding time. You want to eat? Come on. Come on. Come on. You want to come up? Come up, buddy. What do you think? Interesting, it doesn't look like Taz likes slug eggs, which is a bummer because I thought he'd be another animal that we could actually feed off eggs to, but uh, he's interested in it. Maybe he's gonna go, oh, there it goes. I think he is gonna eat it. There it is. There it is, Tazers. There you go, buddy. It's so gentle. Silly. You're so silly. You gonna go by with that? Okay, bye bye, Tazzy. <laughs> He's gonna take it over. He always does that. He takes it over to the dark spot and he eats it. What a silly monkey. So that was weird. I thought for sure he wasn't gonna eat it, and it turns out that he likes it. So here's another animal that we could feed some of the slug eggs to as we have them. Hopefully, we won't have too many slugs, but hey, I wanna put them to use. I don't know about you guys, but I'd say that was a pretty eventful day. And it's about that time to wish you guys an amazing day and tell you how much I love all of your support. You guys are truly amazing. Do me a favor and be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.